This episode of This Week in MMO is brought to you by Audible. Head on over to audible.com slash gamebreaker to try Audible free for 30 days and get a free audiobook. Game Breaker TV. Hello, hello, hello. Friday, Friday, Friday. What's up, everybody? It is This Week in MMO, episode 1, 2, 3, 4, November 30th, 2012. I'm Gary Gannon, and of course, you're watching Game Breaker. Pretty good show jam-packed for you today. We're going to talk a little bit about Project Blackstone, what it is, what it could be, probably Bungie's Destiny. You got a lot of speculative stuff. Planet Side 2, Final Fantasy 14, all that and more. But first, Hillary, a.k.a. Pocket. Hello. Hi there. Good to see you again. Mm. Good to be blue, here again. Blue and purple, blue and purple now, huh? Yeah, I dyed my tips because they were turning orangey. It's pretty awesome. I need to do that. What if I did like blue and purple hair? I used to have, actually. I, have, I used to actually have purple hair longer than yours. Isn't that ridiculous? Really? Yeah. I can't picture today. that. I know. I'll find <laughs> some pictures someday. Uh, and of course, joining us as always, Mr. Jason Winter. How are you, sir? Oh, we saw that old picture where you had long and orangish hair. So that, yeah, that is picture that? is like normal color hair. But I did go through phases of dyeing it like purple and just craziness. So yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I've never had orange hair or long yeah, hair. White, purple. I never did blue. Oh, I'll be white someday. I'm, I'm going. I'm going white already. I think. Did black for a <laughs> long time. Yeah. All right, let's get to it. What do you want to talk about today? Let's see. Project Blackstone has obviously got to be the big news of today. Uh, looks like Blizzard Entertainment have uh, secured the URL, and everybody is freaking out, speculating what in the world could Project Blackstone possibly be. Lots of uh, Diablo 3 speculation going on. Um, I don't know. What, what, what's your guys' first uh, thoughts on this? What, what do you think they could be pointing at? <sighs> Popcorn, Jason. Well, it's not like we're going to say something. Uh, you know, actually, I hadn't thought about Diablo three uh, until just now. I was, only, I was only thinking in terms of WoW and, of course, Titan, you know, Project Blackstone Titan or whatever. But yeah, I mean, it could just be DLC for Diablo three, which would, I think, make would kind of make the most sense, even though it'd be kind of like the least interesting, just because it's, it's it just come up so soon, and it's, they're not really trying to hide or anything. So I could believe that it's something that quote-unquote minor as opposed to the big reveal that's just isn't as much fun as wildly speculating though i know i mean we i think i think we all want it to possibly be titan but i don't really know what the tie would be here so what's in the i'm i played some diablo 3 but i'm not so familiar with it that i know what they're all talking about but it, there's something called like the black source the black stone in diablo 3 so i think a lot of people are thinking that that's going to be possible but then then there was uh randy jordan uh tweeted a hint and all we got, we got this, we got the timeline. This was uh, something that they had on display actually at BlizzCon, which is their, their Blizzard timeline of games. And it shows that from 1992 to 1996, and you've got lost Vikings there, uh, you know, two of them in 92 and 94, you've got Warcraft two. I don't know. I don't know how this fits in. There's really, there's not, I don't see a Diablo three reference here, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Does this, does this shed any light? Anybody got any other ideas of what this could mean? Like it, is it Lost Vikings? Is it? Are they bringing back something like that? I mean, Warcraft <sighs> Four. I mean, it, it could be anything. It's like there's like I, I don't know. If it is related to that picture, I, I just don't see anything there that they would want to. Bring. Like I said, I mean, Lost Vikings, really Warcraft, Warcraft Four. There just doesn't seem to be anything there that you think of as being major enough for them to. To, to be involved with, with something this big, so you don't think Lost Vikings could actually come back and be cool? I, I think it, <laughs> you know, you know, you know what I thought though, because I played Lost Vikings actually on like the NES or Super NES back then, and when you guys were playing Trine, I thought of Lost Vikings because it is a three-player thing. We have to kind of be cooperative with your the way you handle your physics and whatever. Maybe a game in that mold, maybe, maybe I don't. It's hard. To, how how popular was Lost Vikings back in the day? Do either of you guys know? No, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't think it was exceptionally so. It no. wasn't ex it wasn't exceptionally popular, but I'm almost wondering if now that like it's almost like when like 
bands aren't so popular in their day and then they break up and then like 10 years later all of a sudden they've got like this like huge following and they go play shows like 10 times bigger than they've ever played in their lives like i've seen a couple bands this year they're kind of like, i wonder if like lost vikings is like that i could see so many blizzard people like there's so many people into blizzard now that they could probably use and what else is here i can't i can't read the bottom one there what does it say it says like black what is it what game's that black oh that's black is it black black thorn black thorn black, black horn black thorn something like that Blackthorn. Yeah, they would call that it was a pretty mediocre adventure game or something like that but yeah. that's at least got the word black in it black project blackstone <laughs> i black think they thorn. did this on purpose i'm you just think gonna it's throw totally this throwing us there. off this is they're doing it on purpose they're trying to get hype built about everything they want to get hype built about their games is it going to be a wow expansion is it going to be part of d3 is it going to be titan is it going to be a completely new game altogether what's going on oh my gosh and i think they honestly are doing that on purpose i think they want the hype over their games to to happen and blizzard is one of the people that they can do that they can lay they can purchase a domain and people just go crazy trying to think about what it is and i think a Wait, lot of you people think are hopeful you think even the domain is a throw, like a throw off? You don't think the domain's even like really going to be associated? I don't know if it's going to be associated or, I mean, they obviously let it slip on purpose. If they wanted to keep it private, I'm sure they could really easily. It's like, it's obvious they let it slip on purpose. So that way hype built over nothing, essentially. Do they, have, <laughs> did, you know, do they, do they, does Blizzard have um, a history of, of trolling like that though? Like with completely just putting out false information? Do we know? You wouldn't think they would if they if they registered a URL for it, because that that's also something you can change, you know. Yeah. It's not like you just put out a name and then you change it to something else. Like there's no Titan.com or whatever, because it's gonna be called something else. So you wouldn't you wouldn't make the URL if that wasn't the name you're planning to use for whatever. What would you guys like? I don't think they'd name it. I don't think if it, if it was part of Titan, I don't think, or or even if it was an expansion, I don't think they would have named it Project Blank. I mean, that just makes it sound like it's also just, it's a Titan. It's a Titan name. It's a temporary name. I feel like they were trying to either show that they're coming out with a new game or that they are um, trying to throw us off on purpose. But what did they, did they, if they registered the copyright for the name, quote, Project Blackthorn, then that's what they register and that's what it's, it's called, I think. I think. I mean, I'm no copyright expert, but if those are the words you put in there, yeah, then, I mean, they, they would have to be copywriting and, and, and holding onto a URL like as a temporary code name for something possibly to then change it again, which seems unlikely that they would copyright it. I don't know. I don't think that's unlikely at all. It's Blizzard. Blizzard has money they can throw at that. that <laughs> no, they can. They, 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 they can. I, Screw what, what patent you, law. Screw copyright. We have money. What would that's you, like, what would you that's have, like, they'd be like, we're going to take squirrels, the name's Project Squirrels, but it's actually about cats. Ha, ah, threw you off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what, just what, like that. What would you guys like it to be? If any of the, if, if, if this image says anything, I guess that we can kind of play off of Project Blackstone. I mean, what would you guys like to see most? You want to hear about a Diablo 3 expansion possibly, or, you know, bringing back one of these older franchises from back in the day? What do you think? I, I, Rather, and my, my kind of initial thought just upon hearing it wasn't necessarily to be related to something else because when's the last time Blizzard did a completely new IP? I mean, everything they've released has been Diablo, World of Warcraft, StarCraft. Those have been like their big things, but they're old stuff. What if this is something completely new, like like the next Mass Effect? Maybe it's going to be another uh, an RPG. Well, they it's have completely said completely unrelated to that. They have said that Titan's going to be a completely new IP. They've been pretty kind of blunt about That's that. That's true. So maybe it's dragging their feet on it. There we go. Blackthorn or whatever it is is going to be an RTS game. It's going to be Bla League of Blackthorn Legends. Is gonna be Blackthorn RTS? Like League of Legends. Well, they already have a, a MOBA Blizzard All-Stars or whatever. Oh, works, that, so. that is just awful. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is just awful. <laughs> what was so bad about it? I played it at BlizzCon. It was it, so it, it was so easy, and yet people were still terrible at it. It was amazing. I'm just like, this is so easy. I literally, the, you had five people on your team, and me and the other person I was uh, playing with right next to me were really good at the MOBA. We single-handedly won the whole match, while everybody else did whatever the hell they were doing. I don't even know where. <laughs> This sounds, like every, this sounds like every League of Legends match I've been in. Like, there's like two people like, what the, what are the bleep are you other idiots doing or something? <laughs> you're, yeah, you're, you're already a jaded elite power gamer at the game. <laughs> <sighs> 
<laughs> I'm, I'm looking at these pictures and I guess I'd actually like to see the Lost Vikings come back. I'd, I'd actually like to see the franchise. I think the franchise could be really fun to come back. I don't know. That's what I like. I don't think it's that, though. I don't know. I hope it's Titan. I'm tired of hearing about Titan, but not actually hearing anything useful about it. Just hearing about it. I don't Just hearing about Titan. the word. I don't know if the, you know what it is too. That if if this is really the, no matter what this is, it. I don't think the title's that strong. Like Project Blackstone just doesn't sound like. It sounds super like an awesome. The first thing that it, it put in my head was FPS, Blackstone, Project Blackstone. If anything, it sounds more like an FPS game than anything else, in my opinion. And since they're working with Bungie on, tit on Titan, um, I wouldn't be surprised if this is part of the FPS, if anything. Or if it's, it's either a part of that or it's nothing. It's like, or it's just a throw off where people, oh, let's get people hyped about our games again. But um, yeah, I, I feel like it might be FPS. Well, hopefully we'll get some more information in the next coming weeks. So that's really all we got. Maybe we'll see some more tweets by people kind of leaking some stuff. Um, with more leaked stuff, uh, Bungie's Destiny. So these images all got leaked this week uh, with a bunch of information that wasn't supposed to go out. Ha, wasn't, quote wasn't, unquote. Wasn't <laughs> supposed to go out. Um, but some of the interesting <laughs> stuff here, so... Uh, they, they describe it. So here's a quote from the, from the document, I guess what we saw. It says, our story begins 700 years from now in the lost, uh, the last city on earth in a solar system limited with ruins of uh, man's golden age. It goes on to talk about, you know, this massive mother alien ship hangs above uh, earth like a second moon. They don't really know why it's come there, what it's there for, but it's kind of like our protector. Um, so Bungie did come forward, at least confirm that these, these images and the documents were real. They say, oh, we really didn't want you guys to see this stuff, but go oh, have at it. Um, the concept art looks awesome. But, um, the other really, uh, sort of intriguing line within this document is destiny's gameplay, uh, was described as social at its core offering, and I quote a world to explore with friends both old and new. My old friends and my new friends can explore with me. That's good. I don't want my old friends, just the new ones. Yeah, what I just want new ones. MMO? Is this an MMO? Is it, is it a massively multiplayer it online game? Is it Titan? Hey, we've, we've had a lot of speculation <laughs> about why uh, this has come up before we have actually said it. Maybe is, could Destiny be the same thing? I mean, why would Activision Blizzard have to be developing two MMO sci-fi RPGs at the exact same time. If, if Blizzard was doing one and then the Bungie peeps are doing one, that seems kind of like a lot of crossover. Could it be that they're just, there could be two completely different genres of game? Anything's possible. Like, like could it be a Black coincidence S that a name was released and leaked photos were released and <laughs> at the same time and Two plus two equals four, and what, what? What I almost think of when I see these shots, you see like the, you see the the like there a big base. You also see the tank in one shot. You see the guy, uh, the pilot, and an airship or whatever in one shot. Also, you think of it. It's like their crack at Planet Side Two or something. Mm, like some sort of great uh, battleground with friends old and new. I like aliens. <laughs> Sorry, that was random. <laughs> <laughs> See, there's the ship uh, there's the plane or whatever yeah. and there's yeah, I mean, jetpacks or anti-gravity or whatever I, I don't know uh, the, you know they're talking about the you know a, a really big uh, franchise that a lot of people from young to old can kind of enjoy so it sounds like it's going to be a little less mature than the halo franchise it looks like they're they're they i think they reference the age of like seven on up in this so it looks like they're I'm definitely sure seven year olds i'm sure plenty of seven year olds play halo I'm sure they do as well, but they're really not supposed to. So bad parenting, I guess. Um, I don't know. I, I, mean, I guess it would. It makes sense to be MMO FPS, um, but nothing's really been confirmed. Do you guys think this has no. any? It doesn't. It doesn't have any. You know, anything, any sort of tie to Blizzard. I just find it odd if this is an MMO FPS and sort of the rumors floating around everywhere on Titan are is that it's an MMO. There's FPS. a gun. You see a gun. There's a gun, a gun and binoculars right there. Gun and binoculars <laughs> right there. That's it's the new War Z Day Z. Oh, right is that what it is? Actually, I figured it out. You're welcome. You know, I just remembered this that we had done a hit on this 
several months ago from uh, May. I'm building it on our site, May 22nd. Uh, talking about the MMO FPS Destiny. Bungie confirms Destiny MMO FPS for Activision. Yeah, because then we, did we, I think we got, if I remember right, didn't we talk about it? Because that's when they got the URL. Destiny and everything was described by a former Bungie contractor as a sci fi MMO shooter or, quote, wow in space. Uh, somebody and said, the weird thing great is, if like, you can make a world that was always there for you. There's been a lot pointing to the that it's like, you know, it's a massively multiplayer online game. Um, and still, I got to go back. Xbox 360 in 2013. Exclusively on the Xbox. I mean, there's no, yeah. there's no word of Activision here. I just find, I don't know, because now, do you think? I mean, Activision Blizzard are part under the same umbrella, right? And we, do you guys all believe that that Titan is probably an MMO FPS? Yes. Mm, I'm yes. not convinced. I am. They, they like after, like shortly after announcing Titan, they or releasing some. I guess you're working Titan, with Bungie. They, I see that yeah, they went with Bungie on it. And it's like yeah. that that is a huge telltale sign that they got some great pe a great company in there helping them. Does this and, cross over? What what's the differentiation here? Like where how do they how do they is this is these are both Activision Blizzard. So how do they sort of separate these two properties then? I mean, they seem just seems like a, a, a gameplay would sound like it's similar parallels. I mean, we don't know until we actually see the nuances of it, but it just seems this all everything that we're like learning about Destiny kind of seems to 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 just mirror what we know of or you know lack of what we what we do know of Titan or what we think Titan is going to be, except for the oh, fact right. the, the only the other thing only, about Destiny. Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. What about I just Destiny? Kind of said, the other thing is that uh, the agreement that we saw that talked about this before was that there'd be four sci-fi fantasy action shooter games, codenamed Destiny, released every year beginning in twenty every other year beginning in twenty thirteen. So it's going to be maybe a series of games. It's going to be another Call of Duty. Or is, it could be that. Or it could be on different platforms. Could come out on Xbox 360, then PC, then iOS, that sort of thing. That could be four things. Could be platform based. You wouldn't release the same game every other two years later, every other year, though. I guess no, it could that's be different. True. You wouldn't do that. Like the Assassin's expansions. Ones, they'd release expansions. Yeah. If it's an MMO, they're going to release expansions. That's how. That's how often you see expansions in other MMOs. Is about two years. So. What I could believe is that someone doesn't know what an MMO, whoever wrote this thing up originally doesn't know what an MMO is. They just see, it's a shooter you can play online. It's an MMO, You're just like Call of Duty or whatever. Yeah, yeah not, not really. Yeah, those aren't MMOs. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well. Two stories this week coming back to back of just speculation. I don't know. I'm, I'm intrigued, and I can't wait to just like get some more information just to kind of see what the, different, the difference between this and Titan are. Would it blow your mind if they were the same thing? No. Like what if they were the, the what if they were they what if they were both talking about the exact same game and they're and they're working together? Then they really need to work on their PR communication. <laughs> Left or hand, do right they? Hand, or this. do they? Or is it, or is it the, brilliant? I, I, because the Bungie okay, Halo yeah. peeps are like not really say like WoW players and they're paying attention to it, and then all the World of Warcraft Blizzard people are paying attention to it. What if we're all paying attention to the same thing? We just don't know. Well, it. that's the thing is, is it might be brilliant that they're actually getting Bungie to come out and release stuff on accident, um, and then they're getting Wild or Blizzard to come out and release stuff on accident, and they're getting both sides really hyped, and then in the end they'll be like, "Oh, they're the same game," and everybody will be like, oh, and then they'll pee their pants and cry like little girls, and buy the game. You have to be really coordinated to look that <laughs> uncoordinated, though. <laughs> It would be, we would all just flip out if they, the marketing actually came out and that that was actually the case. That would actually be quite interesting if both of them just changed. Like, oh, we were both talking about the same thing. We had different code names and boom, this is what it is. And here's the actual name of it. And everybody's now paying attention. I don't know. Let's see. All right. Next up, uh, Massively did a pretty lengthy interview with Matt Higby from uh, the old Planet Side 2 Sony Online Entertainment. And there's actually some really interesting stuff in here. Go through a couple things. First up, what do you guys think about this? I don't know if you guys got a chance to read this, but um, account-wide station cash unlocks coming. Yes, yes, yes. Confirmed. Coming uh, to the game. Thank Lord. A lot of free-to-play games don't like this. This is uh, So station cash, if you guys haven't played Planetside, it's their currency. You know, you pay real dollars, you buy station cash, you buy things in the game, you unlock them on your character. Right now, it's actually, you know, it's locked onto that character. Uh, they are going to open that up and make it account-wide. So if you make multiple characters, you'll have that unlocked for everything. Except, of course, uh, if you buy something that's like uh, class-specific and it doesn't work on, you know... Uh, I forget, there's a few examples of like items that weapons and things that won't work. So that's not going to work. 
-hmm. But um, I think it's a great move. I think I, I wish more free to play games would would kind of go down this route and just. I guess they can technically lose money, but doesn't it make gamers that much more happy? Like, it makes me want to like roll more characters and on different servers and actually spend more time in the game. If I know that I at least can like jump in and like I've got my guns and I've got my you know I got I got the stuff I bought. How's that work though? I mean, your TR guy is what is leaving weapons behind for the NC, isn't that a little uh, shady? What do you mean? Oh, just you're saying like so my TR guy unlocks a shotgun. What is he just kind of put it in his night? My, my NC guy picks it up. What are you RP now? Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> <RP>. <laughs> <laughs> I RP in FPS games all the time, especially CS:GO and Halo. <laughs> I'm I'm one thousand percent okay with this. You know, you really wouldn't yeah, want. You yeah. don't want no, this. No, Jason? No, I, like, no, I like it. I like it from, from from a gamer perspective and from you know not having to unlock the extra stuff. Hey, that's great. I love it. If they think they can make it make do without uh, like said without the extra money they'll get from getting people to unlock across multiple characters, then yeah, great. Thumbs up. I think they're almost overwhelmed by the fact that how many people are playing the game. So they looked at all the data apparently, and it's overwhelmingly you know kind of pushed them into that to that space of like unlocking all this stuff. What do you guys think about the UI? But Hillary, have you got a chance to play Planet Side yet? You jumped in. I played it a bit. Uh, I and I thought the UI was easy to follow. I thought it. I I didn't really think anything of it. <laughs> it, it and I think that's a good thing because if it were a bad thing, then I would I would look at the UI and go, I have no idea what's going on. But I thought it was easy to use, easy to follow, easy. Uh, I'm one of those people, though. I get into a new game, and I start pressing every button to find out what opens with every key. I'm one of those people. And so that's You tossed that's a grenade in like the first minute you were in and blew up half the room, didn't you? <laughs> well, in CSGO, I actually kept throwing away my, gu my guns. And then I'd start running. I'd be like, I don't have any guns. <laughs> and they're like, you keep throwing them. But yeah. So I I'm one of those people. So they talked about um, they t they're taking a hard stance on on U on UI modding. So no mods, zero mods. You will not. They will not allow add-ons basically to the UI whatsoever. Um, which I know some people are kind of upset about. They, a lot of MMO players just love the add-ons. But one thing that will be coming back, uh, at least, is the uh, being the ability to move around your UI anywhere. Uh, it was in beta for a little bit a little while. And I think a lot of people like that. Just be able to move your chat box around and just, you know, position it the way you like it. They had to remove it when it went live. They said it was a little bit buggy and needed more work. But that will be coming back. So you will be able to move everything around. Uh, Jason, what do you think about no add-ons? I mean, is it, you play, you've been playing a lot of Planet Side. Do you see the uh, need for add-ons? Would you you're kind of bummed that you're not I don't really use add-ons much in any game I play. Usually I'm pretty happy with the, the regular thing and you know, kind of feel like if it wasn't meant to be like that, you know, get over it or something. Obviously, I've never played never been a hardcore raider in WoW. I know people have like 312 add-ons in, in WoW, whatever, but I plan to do there's just not that much there I think that you really need, so it, it, the, only, the only one that a lot of people were talking about was this uh, mod called Speed FX that, I don't know if it improved the frame rate or, or whatever, but it was something that a lot of people were using, and now they can't. That's the one thing that's really taken off the community, but the alternative is yeah, yeah, all all the hacks and cheats and so on. People can also get into if they modify the client. So, I guess if you have to do away with that one good thing that people like, as opposed to and get rid of all the, or at least do what you can to, to minimize the hacking, it's probably a good thing. Yeah, that is an issue right now in Planet Side. They do need to get it like a little bit more control over the uh, the hackers because uh, the game is is fantastic. I mean, it's I'm having so much fun, but at the same time, nothing bums me out more when you obviously people see people hacking. Um, Hillary, what about you in MMOs? Are you big? Are you big add-on person? Um, I was at first in a while, and I had tons of add-ons to the point it was ridiculous. Whenever they had huge updates, and I'd have to literally like spend two hours just updating my add-ons. But um, I actually got rid of most of them, and the only add-ons I had in WoW after that were ones that would customize UI and the ones that would tell me how much DPS I did, and that's it. And um. With other games, luckily, they've caught on to the thinking of people obviously want to move, move around their stuff, so let's let them do that and be okay with it. And so I haven't needed add-ons in any other game that I've played. WoW is the only game I ever needed add-ons. So I, I don't like them. I think that they're annoying and time-consuming. 
So. I've kind of shied away from them as well. I used to, I used to use like maybe three or four and wow, but I, I just, I, I've kind of gotten away from them as well. It's like the updating and stuff just became such a hassle. It wasn't even worth it. Yeah. I'm kind of with you guys. Like we're like, we're like old school purist players. We're just like, I'm going to play it the way the developer wants me to play it. That's why we suck. Was it? I've used, I've used some damage meters just to see how I'm doing, just to kind of track my and try to improve my builds, or whatever. Nothing that really interfer really affects the interface. And I've got a, I've see, I've got a feeling with stuff like that. Also, that I, I've got a feeling that they may have a lot of that planned. I didn't get a chance to comb through all the interviews, but I know there's a bunch of stuff lately. I know Zam's got some exclusive interviews and stuff where they got some information. And I think there's a lot of stuff that that will help players. Um, you know, right now you can, you can preview weapons and things like that, but I think there there's plans for. Uh, I guess training dummies and things like that, where you're going to be able to like, you know, shoot targets and get, you know, just see what kind of damage you do and do different loadouts and things like that to kind of get, get all those numbers and stuff. Um, I think all of that kind of stuff is in, is in the works, but it's just not in the future. Actually, um, in this interview with massively, they asked about the immediate future. He just said the next couple of months will largely be detailed uh, or dedicated to bug fixes, polish, optimization, and stability. Uh, we didn't want to immediately pivot and move on uh, to creating brand new features until we uh, felt like the state of the game, uh, the state of everything that's in the game right now was as polished and fun as it possibly could be. So we get the, what's funny is in the same week, we get this statement about how immediate future, just going to polish. Nothing, nothing big, nothing to see here, nothing big. And then John Smedley drops this. <laughs> that thing. Yeah, he just drops this picture of just like, oh, you guys wanted guild capital share. What did he what did he say? His tweet was something like, You guys were thinking you, about this? Bah. Yeah, you guys wanted you guys want to tote uh, tanks around in galaxies? Bah. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what it was. It was they wanted some sort of vehicle transports or something. And he's like, Yeah, well, we got this up our sleeves. This is the uh, Bastion uh, fleet carrier that they're working on. And this is only a concept, so we don't know when this is coming, but he dropped a picture of this this week, which these things, I mean, this, Jason, I think we're going to talk about this today a little bit later, um, but the, the mind just starts racing to what these are going to be. Like. I mean, you look Here's, at the size, you got to figure it's, uh, I mean, 10 times bigger than a galaxy. It's just yes. like how the guns can be lined up on it. You're like, what the heck are they going to do with that? I mean, a couple of these looming. These are probably going to like cover the entire sky area for it's like players. A Star Destroyer. Mm hmm. So well, I imagine... bet it's not going to be in the immediate future that they release that. So. <laughs> well, that's really funny. So they're, they're talking about like, hey, nothing big coming in the immediate future. But oh, by the way, we've got this coming sometime. We don't know when, but it'll be here. Well, that'll keep people excited. They'll be like, yeah, but this huge ship, ships, there's a ship. Well, that's, that's what I can imagine. Like, so, so this. So all people are going to do with it is just like they're going to spawn one, like ram it into the ground to take out as many people as possible. Well, That'll be my strategy. see, I don't, I don't, that's what I see. I see. I don't, I don't think these are going to be that, I can't see these being that easy to spawn. I can't see this as like, you know, just, I, I don't know. I'm really wondering if this is going to be such a much larger goal, uh, outfit squads, pulling together possibly uh, resources to keep like, I'm almost wondering if this is sort of going to be the, um, the Titan of Eve before they kind of screwed up how people got Titans. Cause they didn't put any sort of like, you know, resource uh, management into it. Like I could see something like this, maybe possibly that you have to like keep upkeep on it, have all your people in your squad, you know, putting money and credits into it to keep it running. I can't imagine. Cause if, if these things are just so simple to spawn, they're going to be everywhere. That would just be weird. You know, that makes me think now. That's something I hadn't thought of before when I wrote the article. Is it uh, guild housing or mm -hmm. outfit housing? That's what I'm saying. You could probably, yeah. you're probably going to be able to, to, to redeploy here. You could probably change, uh, you know, your, your classes in here. You could probably transport uh, vehicles. Um, I, I think, but I think it's going to be massive. And I think it's going to be, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they put some sort of resource dump mechanic into this thing where the group has to work together and actually daily, weekly be funneling money into this thing to keep it going or it's going to be gone. And then plus Matt, like taking, cause that's what happened with Titans and Eve, right? They were like, Oh, these things are going to be so rare. They're going to be awesome. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, one popped up and then two weeks later there were like 50 and it was like, Oh wow. They're not so cool anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think these these, these are going to be something much bigger and harder to take over, which would be freaking awesome. As long as they have strict controls over, if that's the case, if they're really hard to spawn or they cost a lot of money um, and upkeep, I hope that not just anybody can take over 
the controls and then ram it into the ground like Jason said. <laughs> I think that would really set up good guild sabotage. It would create that sort of eve environment of sabotage and how people will join a huge clan and then infiltrate it and, and destroy it. <laughs> well, I I, I I do think that's sort of the plan. I think that they're they're looking a lot at Eve's I mean John Smelly's been talking about a lot of like, you know, emergent gameplay and references SWG a ton and talks about Eve a lot. I think I think that that's definitely SOE sort of like they're moving in that direction. They want players to be, I think they want the mechanisms like in Eve to be able to do exactly that. Spend like six months, infiltrate uh, a group and then smash this thing to the ground and then we're gonna read these crazy <laughs> stories, you know, and be writing about like, you know, how they stole tons of cash from a, a an organization and smashed their uh, their fleet bastion into the ground. That's my new goal. I'm just going to start joining these games and trying to infiltrate them and then see them crash. I used to do that in Ultima Online. True story. I was a horrible person. Oh, what? No, I'm not. What? You wow. love the Ultima Online. <laughs> Ultima, I did. Are you, paying, are, you paying, are you paying attention to the other any of the other hardcore uh, MMOs that are that are happening right? I know Mortal Online just went free to play. That's kind of they they've kind of looked at the Ultima <laughs> Online. Uh, model and darkfall and holy wars are you paying darkfall, attention to that? i've been paying attention to that yeah darkfall the first one was kind of for lack of better words a failure in my eyes i've been paying attention to unholy wars though and i know a lot of people that i played uo with are paying attention to unholy wars as well it does it does look like it's shaping up to be better i've also been paying attention to repopulation so that i thought that one was pretty interesting as well and so there's a few what, i've been paying what, attention to Tell me about that one a little bit, because I know, I mean, I know everybody references SWG with repopulation. It's just, it doesn't seem like they're getting their word out too much. I'm just wondering if it's like... It's a very small game. It, it doesn't seem to have the, the best graphics, but obviously I played Ultima Online for seven years and that didn't bother me. But um, it it's a sandbox and you can actually go and, and build cities, like build the cities. Um, all of them, they'll all be like player ran and then people can come and, and join and help you build and and I haven't actually uh, paid attention too much in the pa like in the, the recent past but I was paying attention to it a few months ago and kept watching the videos and covered it a couple times on Game Face but um, I look forward to see seeing how that develops. It could become a good game if they do the classes right and or the classes right and the combat but we'll see. I wonder, I mean, you guys think, do you guys feel it like where it's making a little bit of a turn? I don't want to say away from the theme park because WoW is still, you know, huge and Rift and all these other games that are theme park games. But we're starting to definitely see, are we starting to see a shift into more of this, you know, emerging gameplay, more sandbox elements? I mean, Planetside yeah, 2 seems to be I mean, on that route. Yeah, Planetside 2, even like like these stuff like DZ, mm -hmm. you know, if it's on that same mold. I mean, I don't think... I don't think one of those. Well, I don't know exactly how many players there are in something like Daisy or even Planet Side Two. I don't think that sort of thing will ever get to the point where it's having got 10, 15 million active players at a time. So I think it's it just requires a certain more commitment, more uh, more more of a hardcore nature. And I think you're going to get the more the larger population with the easier kind of spoon fed kind of stuff. But I think we're going to see more of those games, and they're going to be a little more popular than maybe they were in the past. Yeah, I'm trying to think, think, like, could, could you see Planetside 2 go to a couple million? I don't know. I think people are starting to um, realize that they, they, they're, they're not going to be the next WoW. They're not. Mm -hmm. there, I don't think there is ever going to be something as big as WoW in the terms of what WoW did. Like, when WoW came out and it reached a huge number, it was King of the Mountain. Now there are so many people fighting for King that I don't think there will ever be something that gets that big. Um, unless it's something like League of Legends uh, that you can join, play for five minutes, and then leave if you want. Um, like people AFK in my games all the time. Anyway, but wow, it, it takes MMOs in general take a lot of dedication to get into, and uh, and a lot of time to get better at, and and get gear. And so I don't think that you'll see another one like wow. I think I think the sandbox MMO traditionally has had more of a steep learning curve than traditional or, or than theme park MMOs, and I think there's been a bit more reading to get into. I mean, God, you guys remember like Eve Online's uh, tutorial was like ten hours long at one point, and it was just like crazy. So I think I think a lot, and I think games like even like Ultima Online, like it took a long time to learn those games and understand what was going on. I think if they can if they can 
you know, make that, that barrier to entry a lot smaller, which I kind of feel like planet side two is done. Like it doesn't, mm -hmm. it's not really that hard to get into. I know some people who are jumping in solo are a little bit confused, but compared to other games out there, it's really not that difficult to understand. I don't know. Yeah, I I mean, thinking, all you have to do is just, you just go in and you, you know, want to play an FPS, great. You just got to drop down the ground, shoot bad guys. You know, and that, that's 90% of it right there. Yeah, you can go, you know, about base capture and driving vehicles or whatever, but you can still do it. Just like you said, just jump in like that as opposed to, like typical MMO, and there's going to be these tool tips. To say, How do you move? WASD. Here's your skill bar to go. You know, go see your trainer. Blah 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 blah. blah. So, I'm extremely uh, you know, like excited. Daisy's kind of the same thing. It just drops you in and go kill zombies or other. And people. I think, and even though it's on a smaller level, what I think it shows is that you know, with something like Daisy catching on is I, I, I personally find the sort of like player driven uh, content of not knowing at any moment when I drop into the game what it's going to look like. Like even Planet Side Two, like I drop in, I have no idea what the map's going to look like, and it's it's changing constantly and of course you're just fighting people all the time but i think as more as more aspects you know roll into the game you'll have different things to sort of look at but i i like the fact that when i go into a game i just don't know where it stands at that minute and next the next hour an hour later it's completely different again and it's like the only way you can kind of have that sort of again emergent gameplay is by letting the players kind of do that stuff i hope more companies actually pull this off i i, I think planet side 2 definitely out of anybody could could get this right I think they have gotten it right, uh, actually. I hope we see a lot more games go towards this more, um, for lack of better words, hardcore uh, sort of style. And and that's one thing I liked about Ultima Online is it wasn't obvious. I didn't go in there and be like, oh, it's WoW, basically, with a few m cool minor twists, and that's it. Like, Ultima Online was hard, it, and, and it kept changing when they would release new skills that you could level up, because then you'd have to change to become better and all that. And, and I really enjoyed a game like that. I thought that, you know, I didn't like things that were too easy. Not all the time. It's fun every now and then, but that's another reason I like War Z and DayZ so much, is because they're relatively difficult to become good at, and I suck at them. And the um, but, thing about but aren't they because uh, not to cut you off, Jason, but aren't they difficult the because like the zombies aren't aren't really the threat, it's the other yeah, it's people. The players. It's the players, mm -hmm. and you can't control that, and you don't know what to expect, and that that's why I think that type of gameplay is so much more. And and going really quick back to Planet, like I don't even consider Planet Side like a hardcore game. Like it's not. It's like you can kind of suck and roll with a decent group and still have a great. Like it's not hardcore. I don't think at all. It's not like it's got permadeath or anything or like full looting. I mean, you die, you spawn two seconds later, you keep going. It's like it's pretty. It's pretty lenient when it kind of comes to that stuff. I mean, Alto Online used to have like permadeath and things like that on some servers. But Jason, go ahead. you send the noobs. You send the noobs up front to absorb the bullets for you. Exactly. So <laughs> even if you suck, you can you can uh, you can fulfill some purpose. What I was going to say is, I, I wish though that one thing I think is going to you know keep some people away from stuff like that is that they're shooters, and if you think you suck at shooters, you're maybe not going to get in. I wish there was a first-person view game with that same kind of either exploration or territory control like Daisy or Planetside, but in more of maybe like a fantasy game. Why isn't there a game like that? Um, well, there, like, there are a few, but they just haven't really done... But not, not, not well. like an MMO, not like, not like Guild Wars 2. I mean, something we actually, you know, like, like almost like the Skyrim combat system where you click your right sword, click your right hand to shoot, or... Uh, so when oh. your sword left the block and you just run around. I think up until now, only, only a couple small companies with very little money have tried to do it. Like Mortal Online, yeah. they've, they've they tried to create something like that. Like it's very it's full loot, full PvP, open world PvP. Um, I think I, it's been so long since I've looked at it. Might have permadeath on some servers or something. I don't know, but um, yeah, I mean territorial control, siege warfare, like it's just a world. That's what we're talking about. Dark not, Fall, not, not, not something with not something with hot bars and leveling, but I mean something that actually is kind of like Planet Side Two in that sense. I mean, I see people oh, put stuff in I see chat. What you're saying you're saying I'm you're just saying, saying yeah, that, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exact exact same thing as Planet Side Two is, but you just have swords instead of guns, basically. So yeah, it's basically yeah. Skyrim. Yeah, yeah, sort of, like, yeah, sort of like that. I'd like to see it. I, I've been dying yeah. to see an MM, a fantasy MMO that only sticks I mean, you to first I've person. Watched some people, I've watched some people stream those couple of games, uh, uh, Chivalry and War of the Roses, mm -hmm. but they're just arena based, so it's like. Okay, you do your fight, it's over, and you move on to the next fight. It's just not, it's not the same. I'd like to see, like, I, I'd really like to see just Skyrim, the MMO. Like, I, I thought that game was fantastic, and everything in it was fine and perfect. The only thing it was missing was good multiplayer, or MMO, the MMO aspect. Um, I loved that game, and whether we will see that in Elder Scrolls, 
I don't know. It seems like they're going to not just tie in Skyrim, but they're going to tie in other things as well, like Oblivion. So. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about Final Fantasy XIV, but really quick, I want to tell you guys about uh, Rift's Storm Legion expansion, which just launched uh, a couple weeks now and back in November. If you guys have not checked it out, you want to go over to riftgame.com, and there's plenty of information there to check it out. Uh, there's all kinds of new stuff going on here. Two new huge continents, uh, expanding the world by like, uh, I think it's three X, the original world size. Uh, you got Tempest Bay, which is the new city, which is awesome. Um, 10 more levels, four more souls. Uh, you got new dungeons, seven new dungeons. The dungeons in, uh, Rift overwhelmingly are awesome. Uh, three new raids. All kinds of other stuff. You got uh, my favorite thing, of course, Dimensions, Dimensions, Dimensions. Oh, we're actually going to have, I think, uh, we're going to uh, keep an eye on Game Breaker because we're going to have something in December, I think, uh, around Dimensions. We thought of something really fun. Maybe a uh, a sort of Dimensions, what should we call it? Like Maybe something like Top, Tuesday's Top Dimensions. There's there's the name. Tuesday's no, Top started. Dimensions. We're going to go in there. We have a good for, we already have a, show with a good Tuesday acronym. That's true. But a top, I couldn't think of it. Thursday's top dimensions. I don't know. Tuesday sounds better. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Keep watching Game Breaker TV because sometime in December, I think we're gonna have some cool stuff around dimensions. Uh, it's their player housing. If you've not checked it out, go over and check it out right now. Go over to riftgame.com. Uh, there's a bunch of information there. You should YouTube some clips on what dimensions are. Cause if you're, if you've been looking for player housing and you want to, if you like building stuff, almost like, uh, Minecraft on steroids, so to speak. You definitely, definitely, definitely want to check out Rift. Um, and they've got a great deal going on. So if, you, if you've never purchased Rift, if you don't have the core game, uh, the expansion with the core game is like 50 bucks. So it's a great deal. And the, the expansion alone is 40 bucks. So only, it's only $10 more if you don't have the core game. Definitely, definitely worth the cost of admission. Tons of great content. All right, next up, uh, Final Fantasy XIV should have copied WoW. This was kind of interesting. So uh, in a recent interview on Kotaku, uh, the new director, Naoki Yoshida, uh, had a couple interesting comments here about Final Fantasy and the direction it took. Uh, so he said, I think, I think it would have been good if they tried seeing what happened uh, if they turned World of Warcraft into Final Fantasy. He says, so because they tried only to make something that was different from FFXI, they ended up with not much of anything. Ouch. Ouch. He talked a lot about how when they made FFXI, uh, the original Final Fantasy MMO, uh, that they played like a ton, ton, ton of EverQuest. Like the, the devs just played for like a year nonstop EverQuest and they kept taking all the best pieces of EverQuest and putting them into to XI. Um, but then when it came time to make XIV, uh, there was really no direction that came down from, from the higher ups that told the devs like, go play this or like, this is our motivation or like looking at, wow, they were just told we need to make something different. And they just went for it, and hence we see where that got them. In my opinion, they should have went and played something like Terra, the action combat, gotten towards, gone more towards action combat. The, the issue I heard about it is that the, I mean, the, there are a lot of issues I heard about it, but um, a lot of it was, especially the UI, didn't feel like it was made for MMO players at all. It felt like it was console gamer on PC, and well, as a, a PC one. player. Yeah, as a PC player, a lot of people don't want that. I mean, I can understand console, you don't need as much, but yeah. And so that's like another mistake where it's not that they needed to copy WoW. They don't need to copy everything WoW does ever. Final Fantasy is already a huge IP. Um, they just need to learn that, especially in regards to UI, that you can't do that for PC. It's not going to work. You can't make a console UI for PC. Yeah, I mean, what's what's scary here is just that it sounded like they just had lack of direction as far as like at least looking at the rest of the industry and seeing what was happening over the years since they made XI. It's like they almost went into a bubble after XI and they were just sort of like, we're like, don't even pay attention to anything that's happened. Don't look at all the innovations. I mean, how could you not? You could say like, oh, maybe, you know, action combat would be better than tab targeting or something like that. But I mean, I almost find it amazing that they weren't really told. Like they're coming out and saying like, 
we weren't paying attention to like what was happening in the game space. Like we didn't even look at World of Warcraft for inspiration. That's just amazing. How could you like, not look at World of Warcraft? It's been around forever. I don't know well, that, what World of Warcraft is. My no, grandma but, knows what that is. But I'm talking from a design <laughs> perspective. That's what they didn't do. Like he's coming out and saying, because he was there when they created the original XIV. And he was like, we were not told to, to, to analyze that and look at that and look at the systems and kind of back engineer them and figure out how we could put them into the new XIV. They were not told that. They were just told like, go make something new and it completely failed and they made a bunch of crap. Well, yeah, I, I guess I could be like, oh, I'm so surprised. They didn't know what they were doing, uh, but I'm not. I mean, I kind of think that that's what kind of happened with Star Wars and Bioware. Bioware tried to make a console game in for the most part, and they advertised it to the console gamers and not to the, or they advertised it to MMO players, but, oh, we have story and tons of story and cinematics and story and more story and legacy system and story, and it's like, and then the MMO players going, I, okay, what about rating? It's like just everything <laughs> else. And so I don't think that this is the first company to do this. It's, it's I don't know why everybody's shocked. <laughs> So Jason, what do you think now? The way, the way he's talking about this, do you think that now that they've gone back for a realm reborn and what they're, what they're they've done is, do you think that off of these statements, do you think that they've really sat down and kind of really hammered out? Or, or basically, what I'm getting at is, do you think XIV a Realm Reborn is going to be very much a WoW clone? I, I hope they've played some games, some other MMOs over the last two years, something since this, and not, not only not, not just to play WoW or whatever in copy, but also look at what they don't do well because that's kind of what. That's what the you know the Guild Wars Two manifesto was. You know, here we looked at stuff that was in other MMOs. We thought it wasn't very good, so we did something different. And that's a fine way to go too. But you still got to get in there, get the experience playing those games, and take what's good and copy that, I guess, and then take what's bad and and do something different on it. But I don't know what MMO they might have played in this time when they were working on fourteen that said, you know, let's people don't really want to jump anymore. Jumping in an MMO that's so two thousand three. Am I right? Uh -huh. No, no Final Fantasy games have jumped. That's why they just never added them. I, I feel like jump is actually well, not a very, very Eastern thing. Did eleven not? Did eleven not have jump? I don't sure, think you don't. You don't need it in console games, and that's the mm -hmm. mistake I pointed out earlier. You don't need that in console games. You don't need a huge, whole, like big UI either. You just, you don't need much of anything. You just need your character, and you need your buttons, and that's it. But true. But um, in PC, like you need a lot more than that. You need you need to be able to. I mean, how many people just sit there like in Orgrimmar and they're like jump, jump, looking for group jump, jump, and that's all they do. Like I don't think I think the the ADD gamer would just go nuts. Without think, are, are, are Final Fantasy XIV fans though right now? Would you be? A little, I mean, all of us kind of like the franchise. I think, but none of us are like insanely hardcore attached to Final Fantasy right now. We're all looking at it, waiting to play it. I I. I love the art direction. I hope it's really good. I was really excited. But at the same time, I'm wondering what how the Final Fantasy XIV community is taking this and if they're a little bit scared that they are actually going to get a WoW clone with a Realm Reborn. Like by making these statements, I feel like you definitely put out the 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 sense of all right, we weren't told anything on the last run. That's screwed up. Now you put me in charge. Yoshida's now in charge. He gets in there. And he's got this thought in his head of like, wow, you know, leadership kind of misguided me or didn't guide me. And we didn't look at World of Warcraft. Now I'm in charge. Hey, I, everybody, you know go what? play I'm World of Warcraft. You're not going to buy what? I'm going to, I'm not going to, I mean, I don't, I mean, I'm not going to buy the fact that they, oh, I don't know what to do on an MMO. I don't know. I have no direction. I'm making an MMORPG and I have no idea what to look at. Uh, how about the MMORPG that has, you know, 10 million subs. That's a good start. Or how about Rift, um, Ion, Warhammer, Star Wars, Terra? Can I go on? But then why why would he come out in this interview and kind of sort of badmouth the 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 the, the leadership and the direction that they had on Because the it's previous... not taking ownership for, of his mistakes. It's his fault. Oh, it's He's not his not fault. He wasn't in charge then. He wasn't in charge then. He's brand new. He's the new guy. It wasn't so it's, his way, it's his way of saying, you know, I'm in charge. Yeah, it's just his way of saying, you know, those other people, they screwed it up. Yeah, the first one was terrible, but they're not here anymore. It's, it's completely different now. That, that's bad mouthing them, though. That's I know, not professional. I know, uh, that's not professional. So, I, yeah, they made a mistake by not doing a little research, but 
there's no sense. There's no sense in bad mouthing them. We th- it was pretty obvious that they they messed up the game the first time. So, so Jason, what are you expecting? Are you expecting World of Warcraft with a Realm Reborn? Not not exactly. I mean, I think it's like I said. They're going to take some things that work. That you know, I haven't done their research now. Theoretically, they're going to take some things that that work in other games, like the jump button or whatever else. Uh, but what I think actually probably happened more was. They had their creative meetings, and they said, you know, we can try to make something, we can try to sort of copy what's been done before, or we can, you know, be artistic and, and innovate and do our own thing. And they're like, yeah, and that always appeals to creative types. They don't want to copy what's been done before. And you, you have to do that a little bit. You always have to, unless, you're, unless you have an cr- incredibly great and brand new idea that no one's ever done before and everybody wants, you're going to have to copy what's been done before at least a little bit. So to, to not do that, you, you have to be extremely good and produce the, the best thing ever. Otherwise, you're probably going to miss very basic things that everybody wants, and it's just going to all be this one big blah mess. I agree. We have I, to have I, a vision. I'd, go beyond, and I'd yeah. go beyond saying a little bit and almost saying a lot. And do like, you know, like Rift, I think, did a really great job where they looked at World of Warcraft and they said, okay, this all is working. How do we make this better? But they copied a lot of the stuff that was from World of Warcraft, but they did make it better. And that's, I think that's a great model. You can't, go ahead, Hillary. Well, it's like the games that want to come out and they want to change the way we play MMORPGs and what the theme park actually means. If they want to actually change that, they have to have a vision. And one thing that we haven't seen is a game that has come out, I mean, well, with a lot of the AAA MMOs, um, a game that has come out with a vision, a clear vision of something different. Instead, it feels like they don't have a clear vision. They just have a couple of cool ideas, and they don't really know what to do with it, so they throw it into WoW's theme park, uh, typical MMO. Um, but then, I think there's a lot more games coming out that have a clear vision. They know what they want to do. They execute it as best they can, and it becomes popular. But it is funny that I, I agree, but we're also kind of coming full circle, right? Because now, like... You know, it's it's ten, twelve years later, and like you got you got guys bringing back up Star Wars Galaxies, and they're talking about Eve on Law. It's like it's like this circle of like we don't really have ideas that are new. You know, you've got Elder Scrolls Online talking about like you know three faction PvP. We did this in Dark Age; it worked. We're going to bring it in here. It's like it's coming full circle, and it's coming back around to like almost the the early days of of uh, of uh, MMOs again. Well, I think that's because you get a lot of people that are my age that, that played these games when we were young. They left a huge impression on us in our gaming life, and then now we're getting into the gaming and making the games, and and people are going, I really enjoyed this game. Why isn't it around? Why isn't anything like this around ever? Okay, so, so basically, it's all, it's all the old ladies like you that are dictating. All the old people like me, the 98-year-olds, are yeah. starting to get the game industry. Jason Windsor, follow him on the Twitter at oh look at that. Oh a my brand god, new, it's a new Twitter handle. It's a it's a Twitter handle that it's I can, can actually pronounce. say. I could pronounce this. It's winter informal. Wow. Isn't that great. Well, I don't I have even to have to spy. I don't have to spell no, 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 it. If, if you were following me before, you're still following me. Although uh, if, if you're wondering, I'm just I, I've been tweeting, but you didn't see any of the stuff. I probably have. I just never noticed. Thanks. Th- thanks for noticing. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that, but <laughs> she's old. She's got the Alzheimer's. You know, she's getting horrible. up there in age. Yeah, yeah, old age. That came out horribly. I'm the sorry. Mind I, mean, is I to go. didn't notice your name change. Hillary to go. <laughs> Follow her on the Twitter at Pocket Says, and make sure to go over her YouTube channel and watch all her great stuff over Pocket there. Pocket TV. Pocket TV. There you website. go. Little little website. Uh, you follow me at Gary Gannon, follow Gary Breaker TV at Gary Breaker TV, um, our YouTube channel. We're going to start putting more stuff on our YouTube channel, so you may want to follow that. Game Breaker TV 2, the number 2. Cats. You, Lots of cats. Do, no, no cats. We're going to be doing some contests and stuff around that as well, so you might want to go subscribe to that. Make sure uh, on the Twitch as well. Favorite us on the Twitch so you get a, guys get an email when we go live. Uh, new shows, Klaus and Squirrel. Make sure to check that out. Brand new on the site. People are loving that. We got to episode 2. And Lots of <laughs> a pissed off cat. <laughs> have a great weekend oh, follow, follow and the too. follow the cat. Yeah, your cat needs a Twitter. Uh, have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Bye.